a few reflections on the Passion Sunday or Palm Sunday. The title that I have given to these reflections is Jerusalem of our lives. The Holy Week is a decisive liturgical period which brings about all that we have been reading, reflecting and celebrating at our liturgies, that is Passion, Death and Resurrection of our Lord, Jesus Christ. Spiritually rich, this Holy Week is the ultimate week to enter into the mystery of our faith experience. If we have followed Jesus in his birth, adulthood and public ministry, and now is the time to be with him as he enters into the concrete and decisive plan of God, which is nothing but redeeming humanity from the slavery of sin and clutches of evil. To achieve this goal, Jesus had to go through this earthly or early part of suffering, culminating in the humiliating death on the cross between the two thieves. Such a miserable life Jesus goes through, perhaps the most agonizing and shameful death, yet for us Christians it is a symbol of our redemption and glory of the call to follow him even in his cross. I have three points. The first one is Jerusalem decides the fate of Jesus. All through Luke's gospel, Jerusalem is the scene of the decisive life and death battle for Jesus, where Jesus confronts his enemies for the final time, where his mission will be decided once and for all. To be faithful to the Father's call, to bring about the reign of God, Jesus has been moving toward Jerusalem, unavoidably with its steadfast determination to meet his fate and face his destiny. Chapter by chapter, town by town, Jesus has been moving toward this showdown in Jerusalem. Today, as we enter this holy week, the first gospel reading begins. Jesus proceeded on his way up to Jerusalem. Now we are invited to join in this procession, to walk with Jesus along the way, to move in solidarity with his arm in, with him, arm in arm with him as he goes forward to his final decisive confrontation. Today the gospel is very explicit. He is coming from the direction of Bethany and Mount of Olive. Therefore, coming from the east, the same direction as the sun rising on a new day. Using these subtle messages, the gospel is telling us, a new day is dawning and old days are going to be put aside. Death will no longer be the end of all life. Success no longer the measure of human worth. Power no longer in final control. Violence no longer the way to deal with opposition. Jesus proceeds from the east on his journey to Jerusalem, bringing a new day, a new dawn, and we are walking with him. The second point, recalling to memory the historical event from the life of Jesus. We hear today the passion of our Lord according to St. Luke. We begin the Sunday liturgy with this special service that is the blessing of palms and holding them in our hands we proceed and process inside the church. It is a form of liturgy that tries to imitate that event that occurred in Jerusalem 2000 years ago in the lives of Jews. An extraordinary event lived by Jesus and his disciples and also his mother Mary. The Passion reading has a detailed narrative description of things that happened soon after Jesus and his disciples had eaten Passover. The Feast of Passover is an event that recalls Israelites' escape from Egypt and a safe passage through the Red Sea. For us Christians, the same Feast Passover has a different significance, recalling Christ's resurrection from death and giving us salvation. Even before Jesus was crucified, many things happened. He is proclaimed as King of Jews, 
and the exuberant joy of the poor disciples is short-lived. Jesus tells them, how blessed are they to follow him as his disciples. He pre prepares them for the things they might not have imagined in their lives. Their own close friend, the disciple Judas Iscariot, sells his own master to enemies whom Jesus had called oftentimes hypocrites. At the trial of Jesus, two enemies become friends, Herod and Pilate. At the expense of Jesus, notorious murderer Barabbas is released. And one of the criminals who was also hanged received the eternal reward through Jesus. Until his crucifixion, Jesus continues his earthly ministry of preaching, teaching and healing. There is no respite. Probably the passion narratives give us an impression that the powers of Jerusalem will be winners and Jesus the loser in this context. Each one of us has a Jerusalem that we have to enter and a Jerusalem where we will soon be seem to be losers. A Jerusalem of values and commitment to bringing reign of God of are challenged and thwarted in our lives. A Jerusalem exists at our workplace, in our neighborhood, in politics, in the classroom and academic world and in our church too. The third point, the final one, fixing our gaze on the cross of Jesus and we move ahead. The passion story of Jesus should inspire us to imitate him. It must inspire us not to give up those things which would bring us closer to God in spite of the difficulties, trials and tribulations we encounter with. God will continue to be with us when we think we are giving up. Often our life is a challenge, especially when we grow older, when we get into incurable diseases, when our close ones suffer from terminal illnesses, when we say this world is crawling in front of us. As we continue to see the images of death and destruction in Ukraine, we too are like the disciples of Jesus, experiencing powerlessness and fear. In front of the hegemony and power, humanity is forgotten. Before the logic of weapons, the logic of God has no place. In the midst of hope and despair, joy and grief, there is a promise of salvation. A Christian does not have a moral code. A Christian follows a moral code. Ordinary people's shouts of crucify him played a significant role in Pilate's decision to refuse the death of the cross to Jesus. Again, the actions of ordinary people are instrumental in God's plan. We must think carefully about our actions. Do they have negative or positive impact on the world around us? In the decisions people are making? How do they help us to bring about a world where all people have their share, fair share of the gifts that God gives? Perhaps sometimes we need to have the courage to act in a way that might inspire us or require us to stand out in the crowd. At this moment, we should not forget to look at Jesus, the crucified Christ. In our human sense, Jesus' mission is a failure. Did he realize fully his vocation that we read in the Gospel of St. Luke chapter 4? The Lord has sent me to preach the good news. Perhaps yes and or perhaps no. We ask today for this grace that we may grow in courage to follow Christ in, when our life is taken over by something frightening and that we may not lose sight of our vocation as a human person created in the image of God that our suffering turn into strength in walking in the grace of God. Amen. A few questions for our reflections. The first one. Can you place yourself in this scene of the passion narrative of Jesus? Second, what is the image of Jesus that you have in your mind as you enter into the Holy Week? Third, in what ways Jesus is calling you to follow him? The fourth for the final one, what does God need of us? 
What is it that God is asking of us in our lives? Let's conclude these reflections with a short prayer. Lord Jesus, you call me to live every aspect of my life in your presence. So I come before you as I am. With the mirror that the wise men carried, I bring to the pain, the sorrow and suffering that I have experienced. I lay them before you because you are all part of who I am. I ask that God may, good may come from whatever negative things happen to me, knowing that nothing can separate me from your love. May my actions be for your glory and to bring about hope, peace and a new life for all in our world. Blessed Jesus, my Savior and Master, model of all perfection, I resolve and will try this day with all my full heart. To imitate your example, to be like you, mild, humble, chaste, zealous, charitable and kind. I will redouble my efforts to see your image in all those I meet and deal with this day. Not only people I like and to be as helpful to them as I would be to you. I resolve to avoid this day all those sins which I have committed here before and which I now sincerely desire to give up forever. We make this prayer in Jesus' holy name. Amen.